Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful, ready, Baltimore, Maryland. I guess you knew that from yesterday when I was talking about being at the uh, coin show in Baltimore, Mar ba 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 Baltimore Maryland. Uh, it's still on my first cup of coffee here, folks. It's been a long week here. And uh, I'm at the uh, Whitman Baltimore Coin and Currency Show. Uh, that my father used to own this show many, many years ago. Sold it to Whitman Publications, who owns it now, and they do a great job running the show. One of the best shows in the country, next to the Florida United Numismatist Show in Florida. Wow, I said that <laughs> without messing it up. And uh, uh, Baltimore is a wonderful, wonderful city. I mean, a lot of people like to bag on Baltimore. There's nothing wrong with the city. There's nothing wrong with the people, per se. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the businesses. I mean, take a look. This is a view from my hotel room. Now, this is a, is a picture I took off the internet, but I have this view from my hotel room every time I come up here, and it's just absolutely beautiful, especially in the springtime when the weather's nice and the flowers are blooming and everything. Something a Florida guy like me doesn't get to see very often. And of course, you know I love the water, but uh, as far as Baltimore goes, Baltimore gets a lot of flack, but the problem with Baltimore is not the city, it's not the people, it's the frickin' morons that run Baltimore. And that's the problem we have with the whole country and the whole world. And I know what you're saying, here goes Brian again. <laughs> so, but it's true, folks, man. The, the people we put in charge are inept. I mean, if, if you can say Baltimore has any issues, it's that they elect inept people. Uh, they, they put inept people in charge of running this city. It is absolutely a drop-dead gorgeous city with so much potential, it's not even funny. But here I am in, in, in Baltimore, Maryland. It's like a ghost town, folks. The streets, I've been coming up here for 30 years or more. I can't even know how long, uh, you know, a couple times a year. Now, I haven't done shows in a little while, but uh, um, I've been coming to this uh, city for a long time, folks. And it, it is not the city it once was. It is a ghost town downtown. The hotels are operating at half staff they can't hire people uh, there's something really fun fundamentally wrong with this and and this is just one example I haven't been to a large city in, in uh, since 2019 the last time I came to Baltimore actually uh, so I can imagine New York and all the other cities are suffering in major ways and again all the cities across the United States are beautiful the people are beautiful I mean hey listen you got assholes everywhere but uh, uh, for the most part there's nothing wrong with our country there's nothing wrong with our towns and our cities the, you know what the problem is it's the people we hire, the people we elect to run them. Again, we're being ruled by morons and idiots, folks, and that's the issue we've got here. It's got nothing to do with the people nor the city itself. Love Baltimore. I mean, take a look at that. What's not to love there? Uh, all right, well, let me move into, I just wanted to bring that up because there was a few comments about Baltimore being a very dangerous city, and it is. It is. But what made it dangerous? The morons that run it, okay? And that's the same thing you can say about our country, and that's the same thing you can say about people all over the world, from the U.K. to, I mean, listen, the U.K., Australia, I mean, uh, you know, China, you name it, they all got morons running the show. And at some point, the people are going to, you know, anyways, you know where I'm going with this. Hey, let's take a look at spot prices here. And I'm doing the uh, uh, video this morning inside my room at the Sheraton Hotel here. And uh, uh, a little bit quieter, as you notice, and I think I can get a little more stuff, talk about a little more things here. Let's move into CCE spots. Kind of what I half expected, but not the not the monkey hammering that I, I, I was well, I guess not the monkey hammering I was expected. I expected to see, and it's not over yet. Let me do a quick refresh here. Uh, boy, I just put my sleeve in a big puddle of coffee that I spilled. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right. Let's take a – I'm going to do a quick uh, refresh on this screen right here, and uh, let's see what we got going on. Well, uh, 1924 the low, 1940 the high. We'll look at the 24-hour charts. Uh, actually, my connection is a little bit better today than it was yesterday online. Um, and uh, silver, uh, 2453, uh, high 2488, and sitting at 2455, that mid-24 range. Uh, again, I was really expecting to see it hit uh, sub-24. Uh, the day is not over yet. It's still young, so we'll see what happens. But, wow, hey, and... Uh, Take a look at platinum, 993.82. I just didn't think we were going to see a sub thousand dollar platinum, but here we are. Uh, I, I'm not going to talk about palladium because, man, it's such a volatile metal. It's all over the place. But it looks like if you understand that game, there's some good money to be made there, I believe. Uh, platinum, palladium, both metals that are uh, uh, come out of Russia, South Africa, and uh, uh, where else? Uh, uh, Canada. So. Uh, for some reason, and my understanding is, even though they talked about doing sanctions or they're sanctioning cert 
certain Russian gold and the ruble. You know what they didn't sanction? The 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 uh, uh, hypocrite hypocritic hypocritical uh, jerks that uh, make the rules, you know, our, our elected politicians and officials, uh, they, they didn't ban platinum sales and palladium. You know why? Because they need it too much. Uh, so this just tells you that these sanctions are all about jawboning. I think it has a lot to do with midterm elections, to be honest with you, because when you got a war, uh, and as long as you, whether, whether you're potentially going to be in a war or you have a war going on, what a great way to, for people to forget about what an idiot you are, okay? <laughs> Uh, and that's, I am talking about the current administration, but you know, uh, hey, listen, for the, you folks that think I'm just picking on the blue people, nah, the red people aren't, again, I'm not picking on the red people, the red officials and the red politicians aren't any better. I have nothing, no issues with people that uh, uh, vote red or blue, um, except I just don't think you're doing the smart thing. Neither party has ever served us. Uh, oh boy, let's talk about metals here. <laughs> Getting sidetracked again. Uh, it's not not hard for me to do if you know me and you've been watching my videos here. Uh, so nine night, gosh, I'm going to have to flash. In my opinion, in my opinion, platinum is a big buy signal at this sub thousand dollar level. Uh, I believe that once gold starts taking off, silver ta starts taking off, it's going to drag platinum platinum up with it. And uh, when industrial stuff starts really cranking in again, I think you're going to see. Uh, I just, it's unexplainable to me why platinum is so cheap right now, and it has been cheap. Anybody got any ideas or thoughts, put it in the comment section below, and I'll certainly read it. Uh, let's take a look at the 24-hour charts here real quick and see what we got going on. Uh, well, what a tight range. I mean, there's your overnight markets right there on the green line. Uh, 1940 overnight, kind of head back down to that 1930 range. And it looks like we've seen some minor monkey hammering in the gold markets overnight, but nothing dramatic. Uh, it, moving in a pretty tight range there as well. Uh, well, not really tight range, but uh, uh, we're still staying, staying in that uh, uh, above 1900 level. We haven't dipped below 1900. I think we did a few weeks ago, but it didn't last long. Uh, there's a lot of strength to these markets. I believe the big commercial short positions and the, uh, uh, the manipulative uh, uh, monkey hammers <laughs> out there are uh, uh, doing their best to try to recover their potential losses on gold and silver. I think that my understanding is Bank of America, that short position they own with JP, uh, that derivative position, um, from what Ted Butler's saying is their end cost is around $23 per ounce uh, and they're short about 800 million ounces, maybe less now, maybe they've been able to recover some of that at a loss. Uh, and, uh, uh, and a ton of gold too as well that they're in that supposedly at the, uh, uh, what they say the end level for them guys was, I think Ted Butler said around, was it 18 or 1700, no less, they're in, they're in for a big loss still on that. I believe these uh, uh, down markets you see are either spoofing or manipulative behavior by these big commercial short positions just to kind of get that number down and try to accumulate whatever ounces they can. Folks, there is definitely a silver shortage out there for sure, without a doubt. Now, again, for the uh, people that don't really watch the videos, and you'll see a lot of them in the comment section, there's no silver shortage. Uh, absolutely, there's a silver shortage of uh, available silver to own. You would not be seeing these crazy premiums. And, we're not, and then, again, the first person that says, greedy dealers, they need to be slapped upside their head because they obviously don't listen to the videos and or uh, their heads are too thick to kind of get what I'm saying on this. this. It is not greedy dealers out there, folks. It is simply uh, because the dealers are bidding up uh, this product just as much. And dealers, greedy dealers, don't bid up the product and work on thin margins. Uh, thing margins, okay? That just doesn't happen out there. Well, there are greedy dealers out there, but th this uh, uh, premiums on silver is not a result of that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, for example, I laid one of the largest online sellers that I talk about. I'm not going to say which one. Maybe I told you last week. But you'd have to go back and look at the video. I sold uh, a bunch of silver eagles that we got in. That I re I don't want to sell them to my customers. I'm not selling. To I sold silver eagles to uh, a large online company. One of the ones we talk about uh, at uh, nine and a quarter spot plus nine and a quarter folks, and they're probably even paying more. That's not greedy dealers right there. That's people desperate for product. So uh, any of the greedy dealer crowd out there. You're full of shit. You don't know what you're talking about. Uh, sorry I said it, but God, I'm just sick of hearing that. And uh, great opportunity to buy the dips here, folks. Uh, we're in that uh, lower $24 range apparently right now. $24.44. Uh, and like I said, they're just keep, they're really trying to hammer it back down below that mark, but it just doesn't seem to stay there. Uh, we've seen that slingshot effect where it goes down and it shoots right back up. 
I uh, just wanted to do a quick refresh here. And it uh, looks like platinum, boy, platinum was even lower, 983.70. Uh, let's move over to a couple things that I wanted to discuss here, which is product. As you know, uh, I uh, second generation coin and precious metal dealers. I've been doing this since 1977 and uh, been through a couple markets already. What do I do better than most people out there and most talking heads on YouTube? Um, I know my product wholesale and retail as far as I've been a wholesaler and a retailer in precious metals for a long, long time. Been through three different markets. Uh, so that's what I know. and. Uh, that's where my expertise is kind of at, uh, not charts. By the way, Chart Guy had some really good information from us, and I, I think Chart Guy, <laughs> Chart Guy is absolutely on to something. My gut, not not me being able to read charts like him, or or the ability, you know, or him and other folks that read charts. I'm not a technical person uh, at all, actually. I'm learning about it like you are, uh, but I think Chart Guy is on to something. My gut aligns with what his charts tell him, uh, so we'll get into that in a little moment. I think it's something worthy reading. And by the way, I love. My my commenters. Thanks, Chart Guy, for the comments. I think his name is Hundred or Bust. We'll take a look in a moment. Uh, I'm going to call him. You ever seen the show? Uh, uh, what is it? The, the the driving show where they got that guy Stig, <laughs> that uh, the unknown driver that uh, drives around and uh, with the white helmet on. Uh, gosh, I forget, I forget what the name of the show is. I should know that famous UK show. But uh, Chart Guy is kind of like my Stig in a way. I guess. So at one point, maybe uh, if I ever start doing interviews, I'd like to interview you, Chart Guy. But uh, for now, I appreciate the comment out there, your comments in the comment section, and I'll read that off today uh, for the rest of you. Uh, let's take a look at what the best product deals out there. Definitely 100-ounce uh, bars, folks. I use JM Bullion as an example because they are the 800-pound gorilla out there. They're owned by a publicly owned, uh, publicly traded company, which is Amark. Amark is one of the largest buyers of Silver Eagles out there. They have a direct con contract with the U.S. government to buy Silver Eagles. Uh, and speaking of Silver Eagles, uh, and speaking of contracts, uh, the moment. There are only a handful of entities out there and uh, corporations that can buy directly from the mint as far as silver eagles go, okay? And that's, that's a fact. You have to have, in order to be a, a, a distributor for silver eagles, a distributor, okay, where you can buy directly from the mint, BU silver eagles, monster boxes. I'm not talking about proofs and collector stuff, which anyone can buy. In order for you to buy uh, uh, monster boxes and silver eagles, you need to have millions of dollars in liquid assets. You've got to be approved by the U.S. Mint. So if you ever call a small company or talk to a person that claims that they buy directly from the U.S. Mint, they're full of shit, run the other way real fast, okay? Uh, because again, the only people, there's only a handful of companies, and AMARC is one of them, AMARC owns JM Bullion that can buy directly from the Mint. And I have heard quite a few people make the claim, oh, well, this company or my, my friend buys directly. I've even had a customer come in the store that tells me he buys directly from the U.S. Mint, so Regals. And I just got to smile. You know, you know, sometimes you, you, you want to call people out, but on other times you start to realize that their ego is really going to be bruised by it. And, uh, you know, wh what do you gain from bruising someone's ego? But next time you hear, I'm buying directly from the U.S. Mint Silver Eagles, just realize that uh, they're not. Well, uh, best deals out there on silver silver bars, that's it. And as you, again, I started to get into it and I get sidetracked like I always do. The bet, uh, We advertise to beat at Max JM and SD Bullion uh, at my store, local coin store. I'm a brick and mortar in South Florida. And we only deal directly face-to-face. Uh, uh, -face. We don't do any online business. So if you don't live in South Florida and you can't visit me, sorry folks, can't help you. But I do recommend, highly recommend, that you find yourself a good local dealer to uh, buy and sell precious metals with if you can. Even if you have to drive an hour or two. And even if he's a grumpy dealer. Uh, and if their prices quite aren't up to par with J.M. Bullion, um, to have them give me a call. I'll, I'll explain to him, I'll explain to your local dealer, <laughs> if you'd like me to, how important it is that he matches or, you know, or gets close to the price of the online resellers. Because, you know, if he doesn't, he's going to lose that business to out of state, out of town, all right? And uh, that's why I am very competitive and I can afford to be competitive. And my business has increased substantially just by beating these guys and other guys on their product prices. Uh, and for me, it's easy to do and your local dealer should be able to do the same. You know, you give up a little profit up front, but you gain it in uh, quantity and a lot more business. And you, again, keep that money local, folks. Best deals, again, silver bars, 100 ounce bars. I'm using JM as an example, but I can beat their prices for sure on 100 ounce bars. And my gosh, I didn't think I'd see the day where 100 ounce bars were over $4 per 
per ounce premiums. I mean, I think I've seen it a couple times in my lifetime, uh, 2008, 2020, and now, uh, where the price of, uh, uh, again, folks, silver is extremely hard to find. Now, does that mean silver doesn't exist above ground anymore? No, no, but available silver is extremely tough to find right now. Uh, so. Uh, 100 ounce bars are the best deal out there. Let me go back and show you what in stock silver again. Uh, and I don't mind showing anyone. People say, why do you put JM Bullion's page on your uh, website? You're just advertising for them. I'm not kind of and kind of not. Uh, what I'm doing, and again, nothing illegal about this. I'm competitive. JM Bullion uh, should respect me for that. Uh, but yeah, I'm just telling you, I'm going to beat the pants off of these guys whenever I can and wherever I can. Your local dealer should be able to do the same. Next best deal out there is going to be 10 ounce bars. And third would be uh, one ounce generics. And they're still, if you take a look here, they're, we're still looking at, uh, again, this is as low as. Remember, when you're looking at these online websites to check out their quantity, they're usually one to 20, you know, 20 to 50 and 100 or more. They're low as prices. Uh, typically for JM means that you're going to buy 500 or more. And again, I can beat their prices at these levels. Uh, Monster Boxes, Silver Eagles, uh, Silver Maple Leafs, and the Sovereign Coins. Just stay away from them, folks. They're just way overpriced. You're never going to get your money back out of them. You're never going to get your premium out of them. In fact, right now, I'm going to say that uh, you could probably trade your Silver Eagles in right now and buy 100 ounce bars and put more silver in your pocket. There's another good trade for you that you're not going to hear from the big online sellers and you're, you're only going to hear from the smart, savvy local dealers like myself. So uh, there is a possibility out there, folks, that you can trade your Silver Eagles in right now and put more silver in your pocket by just a simple trade to 100 ounce bars. Your local dealer should be able to do that for you. When I get home, I'm going to crunch the numbers and let my local customers know if, if they should trade in their Silver Eagles, which I highly recommend. Uh, again, if you can put more ounces in your pocket by a trading it for 100 ounce bars or some other product. Good deals out there to be had. Stay away from the sovereign products, uh, sovereign coins. Uh, as far as gold goes, folks, uh, I do see the price of gold kind of, uh, um, uh, the premiums on gold going up a little bit. Looks like Silver Eagles went up a little bit. Uh, buffaloes, uh, they are not the best deals out there, but they are not the, you know, at one time, Gold Eagles and Buffaloes were almost $200 or more premium over spot. Um, and, but that's not the case right now. Uh, the premiums have come down substantially and they're closer to uh, 135. Again, I haven't done the math today. Uh, best deals by far though are the Perth Mint Bars, Credit Swiss Valcombis. I like Valcombis personally. Uh, that's probably because we get most of them. But any of the uh, uh, one ounce bars are far better deal than Gold Eagles right now. And because you can pick them up for less than spot plus 80 bucks or I think some companies have them 85. And as I said, I advertise to beat the local. If you live in South Florida, I'm I'm going to beat these online guys, so you're going to come to my store. Not only that, I'm going to give you great advice, and that's the advantage of buying local, folks, whether it's tires, jewelry, or whatever it may be. Uh, let's take a look at the, well, you know what, I'm going to go to GATA.org because this is the uh, guys that tell you how the gold markets are manipulated, who, how, and what, and if you're going to be a smart poker player at the table, you better learn how to play the game, and uh, who the players are, and how the game is rigged, and that's what GATA.org talks about. Uh, two refiners refuse to remelt Russian gold bars. Not much to talk about there. That's just political posturing and bullshit. Um, and you can tell that the two major refiners are run by morons as well, if that's the uh, stance that they're taking. Folks, there are so many. And the problem with it out there is that uh, uh, the problem with what we have out there is corporate media. Uh, and so many good people, and I should, when I call these people morons, these officials and these uh, political, some of them are really probably nice people, genuinely ni nice people that have good intentions, but good intentions don't always equal good results, okay? That's a fact. Uh, so I'm a little tough on politicians and uh, officials, but rightfully so, we should be. Not a little, we should be way tough on these people. We shouldn't be putting people that are inept and, and stupid in there. But the, the problem is, is a lot of these people watch CNN or Fox, whatever their favorite color news is and that's where they get their gospel from and that's where they get their narratives and that's where they form their opinions it's not their own opinion they didn't go out and search about the Russian Ukraine war they didn't go out and search about what's going on with oil prices or gold they don't do it they just listen to the 30 second soundbite and these officials literally rule by what they hear on the news but again what did I say inept morons you listen to morons uh, and, and you listen to inept people, well, guess what happens to you? You make inept, uh, <laughs> inept uh, uh, decisions and uh, you become a moron yourself. Uh, Al's there edging towards a gold standard and he makes a good comment here that says that uh, the Russia, Russian is really not backing, backing, they're not using a gold standard. A very good point here. 
Uh, they've not put the ruble on some sort of gold standard. Instead, they have repeated the Nixon-Kissinger strategy that created the federal dollar in 1973 by getting the Saudis to agree uh, accept dollars only. And uh, he's right, actually. They're not really uh, backing their uh, – it's not a gold standard, uh, even though they have agreed to buy gold with rubles at a certain level, okay, which was a super smart move as well on their part. As I said, uh, Putin is playing, someone said 5D chess, I'm going to use that. Putin is playing 5D chess while our morons and idiots that run our country are, uh, can barely play checkers, okay? Uh, instead, and again, I hate to say that, but it's not, uh, it's not our fault. What is our fault, fault folks? We, we, again, we elect these morons and idiots in office, and again, both blue and red idiots and morons, so it is our fault, really. Uh, and let's just t put the blame where it belongs. Uh, so, but anyways, uh, as he points out here, uh, they are going to just creating a, uh, a ruble, uh, a ruble, uh, what are they going to call it? A petrol ruble, all right? There's a better name for it. Russians are not creating a gold standard. They're creating a petro ruble, all right? Great point by Alistair McLeod. And again, if you want to be smarter than the average bear, read the GATA.org articles. They're pretty good. And if you're a silver guy, definitely subscribe to Ted Butler. Uh, here we go, Hacker Ronin Network. Biggest crypto theft, over $622 million, folks. Man, that's like a half a billion dollars. That is just insane. And you, and you want to put your money in cryptos, huh? <laughs> oh, well. Uh, I know, that was a knock on the crypto market. Hey, hey, what the heck. But it is one of the uh, downsides, for sure, man. And just imagine waking up and just hearing your shit is gone. You're never getting it back, all right? Uh, that's Well, whether they get this stuff back or not, let's see what happens. Sad, though. And uh, the world's being tested to extreme. Um, Russian oil tankers turn off transponders. Lots of good stuff here. Uh, the only thing I don't like is, look, CNN, Reuters, uh, GATA.org. I wish I'd get some more original stuff from outside sources other than corporate media, uh, the corporate hacks. Uh, uh, but no less, uh, you know, it is content, and uh, it does have something to do with the gold and silver prices. And as you know, we, I do the same thing, so I can't blame them. Well, let's take a look at uh, where we're going to go, ZH, and see what kind of political bullshit's going on out there. Uh, and I like ZH. I know a lot of people, listen, some of it's nonsense, some of it's written by dummies, and some of it's written by brilliant people, but it's not that single point narrative that I get from corporate news, where they give you 30 seconds of how you should think, you know, double speak, as uh, George Orwell would say it. And uh, what I like about ZH, it has different opinions, different bloggers, different uh, uh, websites, different, you know. Uh, so you get different uh, 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 viewpoints, and I like that. I, that's, you know, you know my thing at the end of the show, I'm always saying question authority. Well, you can't question authority if you're constantly uh, using their, their uh, uh, information, data, and sources as your, your guideline. And again, that's what most people do when they watch CNN or Fox or MS or whatever their favorite flavor news, corporate news is. All they are getting is a 30-second narrative that tells them what to think, not to think for themselves. That's why I like ZH. Uh, futures grind higher to start new ADR. I'm just kind of seeing uh, what's going on here. This is kind of interesting. Daring cross-border attack, or is it a false flag event, as some people are saying? Uh, but no less. Uh, that's this whole Ukraine deal is just a shame. And what 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 caused the Ukraine uh, uh, Russia war? I'm going to tell you what caused the Ukraine Russian war. Russian. I'm starting to talk like Elmer Fudd. The Russians. <laughs> the Russians are here. Uh, I tell you what started that war was the uh, us, the United States, NATO, EU, UK. Uh, not all the EU, because again, remember the EU is not completely on board with this. They don't like the idea of having their oil cut off, but there's certain countries in the EU, and I'm going to say probably uh, that push this whole thing. I'm going to say probably Poland, some of the other countries that border Ukraine, as well as uh, 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 the UK for sure. The UK is, uh, you, they still can't get over their uh, uh, empire lost. <laughs> all right, they're still trying to regain the empire in the UK, and the problem with the UK has is the same problem the United States has. They elect morons and idiots to run their country uh, and uh, <laughs> that's just the way it is uh, but boy I digress again uh, let's move out of here fertilizer this is really some tough stuff folks um, I told you that I've been uh, storing up on food I did I do it anyway for hurricane season but I went out and bought some some extra food and I got a big giant freezer just in case uh, some supplies on certain stuff gets a little more expensive or just is not there it's a possibility it is a possibility so uh, and again something you don't hope for I figure the stuff in the freezer, if nothing happens in the next six to eight months, I'll start eating it. So, <laughs> uh, And I have freeze-dried food. I always have for 
for uh, 20 something years since uh, hur you know, Hurricane Andrew. I uh, went out and I got uh, food just in case. You know, and if you remember Hurricane Andrew in Miami, man, it was no cakewalk, that's for sure. Uh, it was pretty miserable, actually. And uh, let's take a look here. U.S. Sleep, there we go. Uh, U.K. sleepwalking and food crisis. And why is U.K. sleepwalking and food crisis? Because they're run by morons and idiots. Um, boy, that seems to be the theme for the day. Uh, look at this. Yeah, really? Really? Uh, you know, folks, the problem with Ukraine is that it's run by Ukrainian nationalists. <laughs> and, uh, you know, what's weird is, is we, you ever heard George Orwell when he talks about doublespeak? Um, and and if, really, you've got to read George Orwell 1984, folks. If you haven't read it, put it on your reading list. Definitely don't watch the freaking movie. It sucks, whatever one they made. Watch, read the book, all right? And uh, uh, they call it doublespeak, you know. Uh, last year, uh, before... Uh, before this war, uh, our government, uh, our current administration, uh, uh, the blue administration that's in power right now, and the corporate media was calling Ukraine corrupt. They were calling it an awful country. They were even, uh, uh, who's that, uh, oh man, uh, they do the documentaries uh, uh, f uh, that you see on television and stuff like that, a very left publication. Uh, even they did a documentary about the Ukrainian Nazis, the nationalists last year, okay? And, uh, uh, they, you know, so the, that whole camp, including the red camp, was saying how corrupt Ukraine is, their officials are, how bad they got Nazis in their, their military. Uh, that was last year. Overnight, they've become heroes. They've become the poor Ukrainians, okay? Uh, and again, we created this war, the United States did, with the coup in 2014, 2016. But I digress again, I've gone over this a hundred times, so uh, where are we going with this? I don't know. Uh, guess what I'm going to do, though? I'm going to buy one of these pretty soon. I tried to buy one before, but it, it took t way too long, so I canceled it. But uh, my understanding is that uh, if you apply for these, you can get them done pretty fast now. So I'm going to buy one for each of my each of my guns. <laughs> and some folks didn't even know that I'm kind of a gun enthusiast, and yes, I am. Uh, even uh, uh, one of my favorite YouTubers on guns, who is uh, Hickok45. Uh, I didn't know he watches my videos, and uh, I don't think he knew that I like guns as well either. So maybe I'll start talking more about them. But uh, uh, the thing with my shows is I already digress too much already. And I say the word digress too much. Gosh, the digress guys are really drunk today, that's for sure. Uh, let's see. And sorry about no coin toss either. I haven't had, yeah, I don't know what this is. Now all of a sudden it's true. Again, think about it, folks. The Ukrainians were awful, corrupt. Nazis last year, according to both parties, our government, our corporate news, and all of a sudden they're perfect uh, uh, heroes and uh, uh, victims. Okay, uh, a year or two ago, a couple years ago, this you would have got thrown off the social media for bringing up these right here, this thing right here. You'd have been thrown off for social media bringing up the efficacy of certain things you place on your face. You'd have been thrown off of uh, videos uh, uh, or, or social media and ostracized if you brought up that the. Uh, um, the needles that they give you uh, were uh, effective long term. Uh, uh, you would have been thrown off, and now we're finding out this that that no, well that's not the case. We never said that, folks. It's what Orwell calls double speak. And again, I can't recommend you read 1984. Wow, uh, it's it's the, we're here, we're there. Uh, a little bit late, but we're there. We're in '84, man. We're in George Orwell's 1984, 110 uh, percent. Double speak. Look up the word double speak, by the way. Um, well, maybe I'll look it up for you here. You want to see what double speak means? Uh, let's see if I can open another page. Come on, man. Uh oh, I did the come on, man. <laughs> I'm being brainwashed. Double speak. Let's see what double speak means. I think that's what he calls it. All right. Uh, <sighs> Obscure language. Double speak is a language that's intended to deceive or confuse people. The words used in double speak can often be understood in more than one way. Double speak may take the form of euphemisms, unsupported generalizations, or deliberate ambiguity. All right. Um, I don't think maybe double speak is what uh, uh, George Orwell used. Let's see. What did George Orwell's uh, term was? Uh, George Orwell. And again, I digress again. We'll get back to the uh, gold and silver stuff. Double speak is a term. Okay, it was George Orwell. 
In a future language that dibble, deliberately disguises distorts reverses meaning to further an agenda and that's exactly what corporate media does to you folks if you watch either the red or blue corporate media you are being brainwashed you are absolutely 100 percent being brainwashed with with propaganda and bullshit um, and my recommendation is turn that freaking television off turn those corporate media bastards off because they're just going to warp your mind and have you make bad decisions when it comes to voting uh, uh, I'm not going to say the D word, man. Oh, well, I mean, I almost gave some away there, too. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What else is going on? And uh, the, boy, a longer video today. I'm not in the show again. Got a little time here. Got my coffee next to me. Oh, here's another thing. Hotels, even the nicest hotels down here in Baltimore, there's no room service. Uh, and the, uh, uh, the restaurants take forever because they're working on half staff. Why? When I talk to the managers, uh, they can't find help. Uh, no one, none of the young people want to work. What's up with that, man? Uh, and how are they surviving? You know. Well, uh, hey, listen. Since I showed you this already, <coughs> uh, excuse me. I did an interview with uh, uh, T the Stack, Silver Stacker. What a really cool, nice guy he is. Nice young guy. He likes silver, and uh, 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 I call him nice young guy. <laughs> Handsome dude too. But <laughs> and I'll say that about anyone that talks nice about me. Uh, but I'm only kidding. Uh, T the Stack uh, Silver Stacker has a really good video that he's going to put up. I'm, I'm going to say it's really good. We'll see what happens. But uh, very kind of him to come in and uh, he puts in here Brian Kuzmar owns rare coins and metals and auto C. He knows his stuff. Well, wow, thank you, sir. He's been in the coin shop business for 30 years. He knows him as sells a lot of precious metals. His straightforward answers and strong opinions on the topics we discuss were not only fun, but extremely interesting. Uh, T, thank you very much, sir. And uh, his uh, video comes on tomorrow. It's called T the Stacker, Silver Stacker. And T's uh, uh, fairly new at this like I am. Not new, but uh, he's uh, 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 been doing this probably about the same time I have. And uh, he's got a lot of subscribers as well. I recommend that you subscribe to his uh, uh, site. He uh, goes to a lot of different dealers and meets people. But his video is tomorrow, premieres tomorrow at uh, 9.30 a.m. Uh, so make sure you definitely uh, click the subscribe and like button for T the Stacker. Uh, good dude. And I'm kind of uh, curious to see the video myself, even though I was there. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, thanks T the Stacker. I appreciate it. And uh, make sure you watch his videos, folks. Uh, what else is going on here? I think that's it. I think I'm going to roll into, uh, uh, let me see if I can get, there it is, okay. I think I'm going to roll into yesterday's video and some of the things that I discussed. Uh, I was, at, again, at the Whitman show. I'm still here today, and uh, um, uh, the show is super busy, man. I mean, I'm selling a lot of stuff, but it's collectible. There's really no bullion here. I didn't see any silver on the floor. I see some gold bullion on the floor, but very little bullion here at the show. Uh, but I, that makes a lot of sense because a lot of dealers uh, aren't going to travel with bullion. It's too heavy. Uh, the margin's too low. And this is really a coin show, not a bullion show. Uh, but tons and tons of really super rare, cool coins here, folks. If you've never been to a major show and you live in the Baltimore area or near it, highly recommend you come to the show. It's three times a year. Just go in and look and see what dates they are. Uh, same thing with the fun show. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, uh, comments yesterday. I did Strongman. I had a good show. I appreciate that. And uh, Jessica got the uh, Cool Hand Luke was the reference I made. Uh, I asked uh, I, yesterday, I think I said in this tone, what we have here is a failure to communicate. I was, <laughs> I was trying to uh, uh, simulate the uh, from the movie Cool Hand Luke, and there you are. It's a failure. God, one of my favorite movies as a kid. Um, you know what Cool Hand Luke really is about? Something that I'm about, and if you watch my videos and you, you watch my the way I think, and I think you think the same way, is uh, uh, we're not victims, you know what I mean? Cool Hand Luke wasn't a victim of the system. He stood up, he ran away, he, he, told, he stuck his middle finger up at him, even while they beat him down. That's me, that's you, and that's the people that listen to our videos, folks. Um, and... Uh, he was a smart dude as well, so lots to be learned from that. I, that's a good video to show kids as well. Uh, independence, self-thinking, all that kind of good stuff. Joey, thanks, man. I appreciate that, and you're right on that. This would happen to Netflix and Blockbuster. Uh, Celeste says, I think the change in how precious metals are acting is due to Russia announcement accepting payments for the resources and rubles. Uh, I believe that as well. I'm just trying to see how it actually, how is that playing out and what, you know, what, what uh, Russia accepting resources and rubles and Bitcoin how is that affecting these markets? Uh, again, I'm trying to look at the technical aspect. Of, aspect, of, But I think you're right, Celeste. Thank you very much for your comments there. Uh, <laughs> if it's anything like a Chicago show, all the dealers are trying to find silver. No, really, no one is even looking for bullion here, I don't think. It's just not here. And uh, three feet of snow, wow. 
Well, thankfully, Baltimore has been kind of nice. It was like 40 or 50 yesterday. Uh, show's going good. Thank you for asking. And uh, there you go. I'm shaking the bush, boss. That's, uh, that's funny. Uh, oh, man, where is, uh, where is my chart guy? There he is. Hey, told you he was going to read chart guy. Uh, again, my Stig. <laughs> I'm going to call him Stig for now. I'm not, only kidding. 100 or bust, thank you very much. I really appreciate you taking the time, the effort to kind of uh, explain uh, the charts and uh, what, what your beliefs on the charts are to me and the uh, uh, viewers on this video. Thank you very much. Uh, you've added some extra content for me and, uh, uh, and teaching us as well. Uh, let me read what uh, Hunter to Bus says here from Chart Guy, um, and I guess Chart Guy is my name. You gonna change your name from Hunter to Bus to Chart Guy? <laughs> uh, I'm only teasing. Uh, Chart Guy says my feedback on fifty dollar plus this year and triple digits next year may sound outlandish, uh, not to me, sir, uh, in my gut, uh, but no less. And certainly we've heard the same song and dance from a variety, a variety of well-known silver pundits from who have been echoing the same sensationalist tune to the moon well over the past several years. Uh, this is true, and, and you know what, I gotta admit, I've been actually uh, uh, doing the, the same song and dance myself uh, <laughs> for quite some years, but I, you know, with these big commercial short positions, you know, short positions, banging these markets down, um, 2020, I th 2021, I think, was gonna be a, a wonderful year until uh, uh, Bank of America got into that huge derivative position and sold off, what was it, at least 800 million ounces of physical silver into the market in 2020. No wonder 2021 was a bust, all right? Uh, but no less, I digress. God, you digress guys are getting good drinking in today. Uh, let me read the rest of this. Uh, but have been egregiously wrong, all right? Every single one was based on coulda, shoulda, woulda. So what, what makes now different? That would be the chart setup. There has not been such a bullish constructive setup in silver since the mid 70s when silver rallied from four to 52. It has taken 50 years, but the chart pattern is the data point. Hmm, interesting. And it is now not under subjectivity. This is a bona fide, formidable pattern, and you don't have to be a data scientist to ascertain the underlying strength, power, and stamina, which is coiling for a monster breakout. Chart Guy uh, is telling us that the charts are showing a monster breakout here, folks. And uh, um, my gut tells me, and again, I got to be one of those guys for the last few years that's been egregiously wrong. Uh, however, I can account it again to uh, underestimating the uh, uh, manipulation on COMEX markets. That's my explanation. I'm sticking with it. Uh, but Chart Guy has been mapping out this for 20 months and it has followed the trend lines for per perfection. It is really not that difficult, but suffice to say, we are on the cusp. I am just the messenger. The chart pattern is telling a story, and this one will make the history books. Uh, chart guy, I really appreciate that. That is very positive information, and the charts are showing positive information. Um, and uh, yeah, I gotta admit, I have been egregiously wrong for the last couple of years. However, I still believe that the manipulation plays a large part in why people have been wrong on uh, where silver should be and where, again, what you said, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Um, and as you said that, uh, you did say that the uh, charts do take this manipulation into account. I'm still trying to figure that out, uh, but no less, I like exactly what you say and you are teaching us a lot of good stuff here. Hey, thanks chart guy, I appreciate it. And uh, hey, if you're ever in my area, come by and say hello. Uh, definitely like to talk to you. And uh, I think we're gonna call here. Uh, I don't know, here, let me go down here and see if I missed anybody else, sorry about that. No, no, we got everybody. It was a very short video yesterday and all I did was just say hello from the Whitman Show and that accounts probably for the small views. Uh, and plus, I don't think uh, that the headline was too exciting, you know, the Whitman Coin Show. Uh, that's a real clickbait title, isn't it? <laughs> well, you can tell why people click titles sometimes. I think that's it. Well, this is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. If you live in my neighborhood, please come by anytime. We're in South Florida. We're open 10 to 4 Mondays through Friday, and we advertise to beat the big online guys. Don't forget, we also do rare coins, precious metals, uh, silver and gold uh, estate jewelry and uh, uh, silverware and all, watches, all kinds of cool stuff. That's a separate business. If you see this, that's the coin store. And on the other side is our estate jewelry and antique business. Well, hey, that's it. Have a wonderful weekend. Looking forward to uh, uh, watching uh, T's show tomorrow. Let's see, where is that? There we go. Uh, looking to see that tomorrow morning. And uh, looking forward to uh, see what happens in the weekend markets here. Oh, quick, let's, before we go, let's see if we, they, they monkey hammered it down any further real quick. Uh, boy, you can see I've got no plan on these videos. <laughs> I just hop around. Um, not really about sideways. I think we're gonna stay here. Let's see what happens Monday morning. Hey, thanks for watching. Have yourself a wonderful weekend and I'll talk to you on Monday. Bye now.